During the reign of Wu Zetian, the only female emperor in Chinese history, there was a book which was so nefarious, legend says that it struck fear into this cunning emperor's heart. Even the celebrated Di Renjie of the Judge Di Mysteries fame would break into cold sweat reading it. In this episode, I will tell you the story of Lai Jingchen, the author of a book called The Classic of Accusation, and how he became one of the greatest enemies the empress and the judge had ever faced. Before we look at this dastardly villain, let's look at Wu Zetian and her government. Wu Zetian was a bright and ambitious woman who started her career as a concubine in Emperor Taizong's harem. While she did not get much of his attention, she caught the eye of his crown prince. After Taizong's death, she was brought into the crown prince, now Emperor Gaozong's harem, and became one of his favorites. Through her schemes and machinations, she eventually made her own sons emperors, and finally went on to depose them to make herself the emperor of China. It is important to mention that she made herself a Huangdi, an emperor, the ultimate ruler of the land, not a Huanghou, which means the empress consort of an emperor. Throughout Chinese history, there had been plenty of empress dowagers and regents, who held onto de facto power over their husbands or child emperors. But she was the only one ambitious enough to make herself an emperor and establish her own dynasty, the Zhou dynasty, which lasted for 15 years until her sons revived the Tang dynasty. She was the kind of woman who was too smart to be completely evil. Her ambition was transcendent and she will use any means to stay in power, be it benevolence or cruelty. She was famous for expanding the scope of the imperial examinations and allowed the poor and those with low social status to take the exams and get the chance to become officials. But really, it was mostly motivated by her desire to create a faction that's loyal to her. She was really good at utilizing people of all sorts. The angel she placed on her shoulder was the shrewd and incorruptible Di Renjie, who would be featured in the Qing Dynasty historical mystery novel, the celebrated cases of Judge Di. And the devils on her other shoulder were the cohorts of Ku Li, who she employed to stamp her opposition. In the history books of every Chinese dynasties, there are almost always officials who were considered to be so cruel and sadistic, they were recorded as Ku Li. This evaluation was made during the writing of the history books, of course. While they were alive, they were just sadistic jerks. And if the historians think that they are worth mentioning, then they must have been real special kind of jerks. And among Wu Zetian's Ku Li, there was a budding upstart who gained prominence pretty quickly, Lai Junchen. His father was a good-for-nothing gambler who won his mother through a bet. And this bad apple did not fall far from the tree. He was a serial tattler who made plenty of false reports. One day, his schemes were discovered and he was punished by the prince of Dongping. Coincidentally, Wu Zetian had just recently foiled a rebellion against her by the Li royal family and she was looking for excuses to get rid of any potential opponents. So any informant was encouraged to report any suspicious activities at every opportunity. So Lai Junchen took it. He wrote a false report saying that he actually wanted to present some information regarding the rebellion, but he was suppressed and punished for it. It wasn't known if Wu Zetian actually believed him. Nevertheless, she seized upon this opportunity to get rid of another member of the royal family. Thus, he was rewarded with an official rank, and he was appointed as one of her many informants. Besides being devious, he was also a backstabbing social climber. Through his career, he would entrap and torture many other informants he worked with. In one occasion, there was another coolie that he was supposed to extract information from, Zhou Xing, but this Zhou Xing was an expert torturer himself, 
and he would never yield to any of Lai Junchen's methods. So the latter invited him for a meal and pretended to ask him for advice on the absolute best way to torture a really tough prisoner. Zhou Xing told him that the best way was to put the victim in a large pot and light fire around it. As soon as he said that, Lai Junchen ordered a large pot and firewood to be brought into the room and he told Zhou Xing to get in. Realizing that he was outplayed, Zhou Xing immediately confessed to the false charges. As he rose through the ranks, Lai Junchen gained followers in the hundreds and started to cast his net even wider to catch bigger fish. And it wasn't long until Di Renjie and other good officials entered his sight. Surprisingly, Di Renjie confessed pretty quickly. And here he thought that the righteous Di Renjie would be a tougher nut to crack. Ha! Actually, it was Lai Junchen who got careless. Because Di Renjie was just waiting for the treacherous rat to drop his guard. When Di Renjie's son visited him in prison, he gave his son his winter gown for laundry. Inside his gown was a note to the emperor, containing information of Lai Junchen's schemes. When this note was brought to Wu Zetian, she summoned all the officials involved and questioned them herself. Despite learning of their innocence, she had them demoted and posted them at remote locations. The point of using both good and evil officials was to set them against each other's throat. As long as they're fighting and framing each other, she gets to pardon them at her whim. And to gain her favor, they had to show complete loyalty to her. Not long after, Lai Junchen himself was found guilty of taking bribes. He was then demoted and transferred. Then again, you just can't keep this bad man down. He regained the emperor's favor pretty soon by uncovering a real conspiracy against her. <laughs> However, it didn't mean that he had reformed one bit. No, 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 because as he reported the conspiracy, he also tried to frame his colleague too so that he could take the credit for himself. In fact, he got progressively worse and eventually conspired to take the throne for himself. The first step of his plan was to get rid of the emperor's supporters and family members. Fortunately and unfortunately for him, his plot was discovered early and he was arrested. At first, Wu Zetian hesitated to execute him because he had proven to be useful. So it was up to Lai Junchen's former colleague that survived his slander to convince the emperor to do it. Mm -ah, pure karma. In the historical records, it was said that after he was executed, the masses rushed to beat his corpse to avenge all the cruelty he had committed. Thus, the villain was pulverized into pulp. Only his legacy of terror remained, encapsulated in this book he had co-authored with his accomplices. Luo Zijing, Classic of Accusation. Wu Zetian was a complex figure. She was reviled through history for being a usurper, autocrat, and a woman. She did a pretty good job running the empire. But obviously, no official written history would say that it is okay to usurp the empire as long as you do a good job. It was also doubly unfortunate that the most well-known literary work in her short-lived Zhou dynasty was this nefarious book. That's why her image was only rehabilitated in the recent century. The content of this book is actually quite terse and short. If you read it, you will find out that it is not some gore instruction on how to torture people. It is actually a very interesting proto-Machiavellian literature. But unlike Machiavelli's The Prince, this book wasn't written as a satire. It was written in earnest by a very cynical man who was trying to instruct his minions on the best way to exploit other people's weaknesses. Unfortunately, the content of this book was never translated into English, and you would need some commentary to expound on the meaning of the original text. But maybe that's for the best. Do you actually want to read a book that's considered to be one of the most evil books in ancient China? Anyway, remember to like, share, and subscribe to get more contents on the history of Asia and the rest of the world. If you want to support us, then come to Patreon 
and be our bro. Until next time, stay cool, my bros.